my life changed um, in, a, in a big way with the peace process. Partly because that was through the peace process the first time I was actually given an opportunity to have my story told, to give them that emotional support. I'm sitting here with Joe and uh, we've been meeting for 14 years and uh, I killed Joe's father. We're still meeting 14 years despite that fact. I was still, um, and this is hard for Joe, to, uh, very hard for her to hear sometimes, but I think I need to say it because of you guys here, you know, I still stand by my role in the IRA and I, I feel that we were justified in our campaign. And I'm not for one second trying to justify everything went on. But you can't do that because it's terrible. Wrong things happened on all sides and I know that. But I think looking back on it, you know, what we were doing was necessary, you know. But I'm here now having to go through the consequences of it and be and I'm prepared to look back at that past and try to understand it better and not think I do have a full appreciation of it. If I'd been through everything Pat had been through and lived in his community, <coughs> would I make the same choices? And I remember a workshop we went to and there was actually a, a guy there who was an ex-soldier and I remember feeling the same about his story and there was someone there from the Lawless Paramount and hearing, feeling the same about him and, and in that moment of empathy for all different sides, recognising actually there is no other. We felt demonised and dehumanised by them, you know. And, you know, we were the terrorists, we were the drug dealers, we were the gangsters and all of that. We were playing on our communities and all of that. And, you know, that's, that's hard to, that's hard to carry, you know, you know, in your community. That's hard to carry because you know you're doing your best. In that conflict, I saw your uniforms. All I knew of Joe's father, I knew nothing of Joe's father. All I knew of the people in that hotel uh, uh, were that they were, Tories and Tory hangers on and Tory financiers, and that was enough. That was enough, believe me. I didn't need to know more than that. All these years later, I'm catching up on that lack of knowledge, that ignorance. To be a soldier here, I'd gone through a process of dehumanisation myself, but also to dehumanise the people that I might have to come into contact with. And that was the whole nationalist community. It's almost like when you think of it in a way, the British soldier is the flip side of the coin to an IRA volunteer in that sort of context of dehumanisation, having to dehumanise. We wouldn't have known in any conflict situation, whether it be Iraq or Afghanistan, we, we don't know anybody. You don't know their names, they're just targets. You've got a job to do. Before Brighton, would you know the names of other people who, like people you might have killed or hurt, like in your head? I don't want you to tell me them, but would you know it? Would you know about the people, like when you were, when you were here? Well, I think you'd be amazed or what you're like capable of blocking out, yeah. just to get on what you're doing. You really did a war of Cyprus, yeah. or you couldn't function. Yeah. I don't think you could function. Yeah. So you've got like, no names in your head? No. Just Why is it that important that you empathise with each other? Yeah. Why, why, why? What's, what's the benefit? I mean, because I, I think in what you've done, there's, there's something of essence of what everyone might have to do. So if you've got a good answer, it might be important. <laughs> you sometimes say like mm. that that um, when you were in the IRA, you had to, you did lose some of your humanity, like you had to demonise people because that's how you know it worked. And that this actually is about getting your conflict. humanity yeah. back. Yeah. Would you say that's I think it's the process of conflict that happens. You do you just uh, shut down, don't you? You shut down uh, part of yourself, and uh, you don't see beyond the, the uniform. Uh, you don't have any appreciation for people, these guys. And, you know what brought you to you know what motivated you to uh, join up, up or and whatever you know. I mean, none of that, I, you couldn't have uh, had to put, that would have been too overwhelming for me to deal with. I mean, I had to have this reduced view. I think in conflict you can only work on a reduced view. Mm -hmm. And then, coming out of conflict though, it's part of you shrunk. I always want to feel bad about some of the stuff I was involved in, you know, um, and I want it to affect me. The psychologists would call it post-traumatic stress disorder as if you've got something wrong with you. Actually, it's not a disorder. It's, it's a human reaction. It's, it's a reawakening of humanity. Things I did in the past, I did in full conscience, you know. What I can say is that I am conflicted because of that past. 
But I, I, the, my, my answer to that isn't to forgive myself, because I don't know what that means. The best I can hope for is through this process of uh, re-engaging with the past, reappraising it, that I can be somehow less conflicted about it. So it's about understanding the past, you see. It's about understanding.